Tier 17 maps have been a pretty fun addition to the game. They were insanely challenging during the first week, week and a half of the league, and then they received a small nerf in the latest patch a couple of days ago, along with some nerfs to some of the ultra high-end farm strats that were being used in them, but you know, that's fine. Hi, it's Lerald, and I'm going to talk about Tier 17 maps, but before I do, don't forget to like and subscribe. All right, I'm going to give some tips on how to clear tier 17 maps and kill all the bosses if you haven't already. And then I'll talk about what I've been doing in them over the past couple of days. So first off, let's just cover the rules of how they drop. And we'll just start here at the wiki page for tier 17 maps. And this is as good a place as any to start. They have some unique drop rules. Now, initially, my thinking was like, OK, so, you know, you you do stuff and, and they drop, but Apparently, there's a little bit more control over it, and this would explain why a lot of people who have been farming like dunes would have massive stacks of fortress maps and uh, none of the others. And that is because specific maps of the of the five tier 17 maps can only drop from specific maps in the Atlas. So just to kind of run through a list here, fortress is only capable of dropping from like dunes and desert spring and all the ones that are in this column. And like the only way to get Ziggurat is to run all the ones in this column. So like Ash and Wood and Toxic Sewer is OK. But the point here is that if you want to farm all of them, trying to farm them up yourself instead of buy them for whatever reason, you will have to run a variety of maps. There is one set of exceptions here, and that would be the Shapers maps. The Shaper Guardian maps can drop all of the tier 17 maps and then actually killing the Shaper can also give you any sort of tier 17 map. Now, the way that they actually drop is they convert tier 16s and you have a chance uh, based on how many void stones you've unlocked and how many of them you have socketed in to convert your tier 16 maps into tier 17 maps. And as you can see, it's a 0.4% chance for each socketed void stone. So 1.6% chance to convert a tier 16 into a tier 17. So that means just farming tier 17 maps like by increasing your map drop chance, doing everything you can to juice the amount of maps that you get to drop, and then just killing as many monsters as you can, juicing pack size, quantity, rarity, and it, yeah, basically just killing thousands of monsters per map is a really, really effective farm strategy for farming up tier 17 maps, and these are pretty valuable. There is there uh, is a high demand and a low supply of them, so that is just a farm strategy unto itself. There's really not anything all that more complicated about it. You want to make sure you get all four of your void stones and then kill stuff at tier 16 maps and you will get tier 17 maps out of the deal. There is one really useful scarab for farming them up since uh, this one right here, Cartography Scarab of Ascension, will help you with getting more tier 16 maps. It will increase the amount of tier 16 maps you get. Obviously, this one, Cartography Scarab, just regular old Cartography Scarab will help you get more maps. Uh, but like... This one won't help with getting tier 17s, obviously, the Singularity one that just gives you a unique map. Corruption, uh, that won't help. You won't get Corrupted 8 mod um, tier 17 maps, but Duplication Scarabs, those will help. I have run them some in some map farming strategies, and I have gotten on multiple occasions because of this Scarab, I have gotten two tier 17s instead of just one. So. Both Cartography Scarabs, the regular type, and Cartography Scarabs of Duplication. You could run two of each of those. That's the limit. You could just run four of those bad boys all combined and farm up a bunch of tier 17 maps. And that's that's a pretty good strategy right there. All right, with that all being covered, now I'm just going to list through some of the tier 17 specific map mods that are absolutely brutal because they do have their own set of special mods. And I am thinking about this from a Toxic Rain perspective. So ranged class super high life regen but not that huge of a max hit no armor just all physical into elemental damage conversion okay players are annoyed by the maven this is the worst affix of all time she permanently maintains her heal over time effect on the map bosses and she says her voice lines like every three seconds it's infuriating you can't mitigate this effect by uh, or you can mitigate this effect by Using Frost Bomb or the Reeslatha Pantheon, this right here, it will slightly reduce it, but I would not do this mod unless I can 100% cancel it out, and that means playing a cultist. Even then, I would probably play music or something to drown her voice lines out because she literally spams them every three seconds. It's, oh, it's enraging. Okay, area contains drowning orbs. These are drowning orbs from the Eater of Worlds fight. Um... I thought this was the easiest affix of the entire bunch. I just moved out of the orbs. It really didn't do anything at all. 
Searing Exarch Runes. I think I have a map around here with that on it. Here we go. All right. Area contains runes of the Searing Exarch. This is just like in the Searing Exarch fight, that little like flaming snake of runes that moves around the room. Those will be hanging out ready to debuff you and do a lot of damage. They're brutal. I hate them. Uh, massive damage taken increase. I, I wouldn't play around with a these at all. Monsters are shaper touched. Hilarious. You will round the corner into a shaper slam like 50 times a map. So if you can tank a shaper slam, you're probably good. Otherwise, it's very bad. The shaper beams being all over the place are terrible. It is hilarious if you have monsters convert on death, though. You'll just have like hundreds of shaper beams everywhere, and that's pretty funny. Area contains tentacle fiends. This is that elder circle explosion thing from the elder and uber elder fight. Uh, it's terrible. It deleted multiple maps for me. I, I would definitely stay away from that mechanic entirely. And then map boss is accompanied by a synthesis boss. I haven't played around with this one. It's probably easy. I've just been like too much of a coward to do it. I would imagine it's probably easier than the rest of these, and uh, I don't know. This is the one that I have not bothered to play with because I was like spooked by it. Players are assaulted by blood stained saw blades. I swear I have one of those around here. Uh, this is a nightmare. This is the ultimatum mod that causes uh, like saw blades to attack you in a cross formation, and it is insanely dangerous. It's basically a character deleter. Here we go, <laughs> right here. Uh, terrible, nightmarish. Area contains volatile barrels. I think I have that one on one of these as well. Uh, there we go. It basically punishes you for trying to rush through the map, which is usually that is a good idea if you don't have this affix on there. It's super dangerous. It's like a very mean joke played by GGG on the players, but genuinely funny to be killed by barrels. It's kind of um, definitely an intentional Diablo 2 reference. Rare monsters have volatile cores. OK, this is one that was just straight from the depths of hell uh, pain, right? You are just constantly swarmed by cores the entire time you're in the map. Those magma balls that chase you around. Awful. Area contains petrification statues. I did complete one of the one of the maps that I had that had this on there. I did it just to try it. My recommendation is don't. Now there are a bunch that I just straight up refuse to do. Meteor on using a flask. Uh, being targeted by meteors the entire time you're in the map sounds awful. No thanks. Reduced action speed for every skill you've used recently. No, I won't be doing that. Bosses are possessed. No thanks. Reduced aura effect. No regen. No energy shield recovery. 50% less defenses and minus max res. These are all terrible. Players are marked for death for 10 seconds after killing rares. Find one of those here. Here it is. OK, and if we look at the description, marked for death makes you take 30 percent increased damage and you can't recover life or energy shield. That is completely unsustainable for a Pathfinder build, especially one that's using Eldritch Battery. So that was just a, a complete no for me. No, 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 no. Players deal no damage for four out of every 10 seconds. Also, no. And finally, all magic and normal monsters are in a union of souls. I don't know if I have any of those. Looks like I have one here. OK, Union of Souls basically is like a sort of zone wide soul eater mechanic. It makes uh, makes all the ones that you kill then buff the remaining ones. And so by the end of the map, you will basically create a turbo monster that can like hit you so hard it formats your hard drive. I, I don't want to deal with that, so I pass on that. So obviously the point here is that you're going to need to spend some chaos orbs rolling these maps to get them into a usable state. Probably. Maybe you get lucky and they just drop totally doable for your build, but that hasn't been the case for me. Now, as for which mods are build disabling for you and which ones are trivially easy, that's going to change depending on your build. You know, if I uh, if I were playing a Slayer build and I had one of these ones that says you cannot leech, that would be just completely build disabling. But Toxic Rain Pathfinder. I don't leech at all. I don't care about any of this reflect. I don't really care about monsters like having less effective curses, that kind of thing all doesn't really matter. So definitely a lot of stuff that you have to play based upon your build. All right, I have two Atlas passive trees I want to show off here. The first one is a very, very basic tree that I used uh, a version of for my first clear. And as you can see, not even remotely filled in. The main point here is, and you can fill this in however you like, but the main point here was to avoid all of these map mod effect nodes at the top of the tree. Every single one of them I stayed away from because I didn't want to do anything to make the nightmarish 
uh, map mods and monster mods any more dangerous than they already were. I also did everything I could to guarantee Nico was in the map, which I mean, you could just use a Sulfite Scarab that would also work, but force Nico into the map and use Packed with Energy. I think that 3% max elemental resistances, the 105% increased damage and the 45% increased move speed, all three of those bonuses are all very, very valuable when you are rushing through tier 17 maps you know they're they're dangerous you want to rush to the bosses and kill the bosses having more damage helps with that having more elemental resistance is helpful with that like just all of this is very good you could take other things you could take shrine nodes i've been doing that in my dangerous setup i think shrines are extremely dangerous to be around but there is a positive of if you're able to clear out around them and then you actually get some useful shrine bonuses Maybe they're really good, so that is something you can play with. But I would say basically everything except for Nico has some gamble aspects to it. Mighty Hunter, the Einhar uh, passive that keeps him around and makes him do a, done, a ton more damage. Uh, that was initially being used to just like instantly kill bosses like less than a second, and that has been nerfed and it should have been nerfed. It was very cheesy and like I, I wasn't interested in doing that at all. You could force Einhar in. The downside of uh, forcing Einhar in is that now you're going to have to deal with some beasts in tier 17 maps. So, you know, everything other than the Nico stuff is going to have some positives and some negatives to it. Nico is just all upside. I do take Speaker of the Dead. I would recommend taking Speaker of the Dead even if you're not interested in doing anything with Torment at all, just so that Tormented Spirits won't jump into monsters and possess them and then just turn them into godless killing machines. I think that pretty much covers it for uh, like this tree. You know, you can play around with it more and definitely add more stuff. There's a lot of a lot of unused potential here, but in terms of just making this as easy as possible, trying to clear out the maps, minimize the difficulty, this is the setup. We're coming over here and we're taking the reduced effect of haunted modifiers and the increased chance for devoted modifiers passives have been changed to be increased effective devoted modifiers, but that's again, that's still like good. Those are still largely positive, so you do want to pick those up and you definitely want to reduce the effect of haunted modifiers since they are Pretty nasty, and they have a multiplicative effect with all of the gross map mods. Okay, now this is the big, extremely dangerous dumb tree that I've been running. Super, super dangerous. I'm taking everything to make the maps even harder. Increased effect of haunted modifiers. I'm doing all I can to make monsters drop more all flames at 84 item level and more corpses at 84 item level. So that is kind of a lot of the value that I'm generating out of this strategy. But then I'm taking all the shrine nodes. I've gotten killed around shrines a ton of times. I'm taking every single map mod, uh, map effect increase that I possibly can. Every single one of those is being added in this tree. Uh, not necessarily a talent tree or passive tree that I would recommend. I wouldn't recommend this at all. It's just sort of a challenge I've been doing, seeing like, can I clear out all of the tier 17s with maximum map mod effect and and shrines and a bunch of dangerous stuff in them. And can I farm a bunch of corpses while I'm doing that and actually turn a profit? And the answer is it, yes, yes, <laughs> yes, I can, apparently. And it's been uh, it's been challenging. I've definitely been killed, but it's been pretty fun. Okay, so now let's actually talk about clearing out the maps. There are basically two strategies for just doing the trash in the maps. You can be super methodical, safe, and try to off-screen clear your way to the boss, slow and steady and safe. Basically, you pretend you're on hardcore. This approach can work, and depending on your build, you know, if you're playing something that's slow and using a shield and very deliberate, that might be the better way to do it. Or you can sprint through the map like your hair is on fire. Find the boss's room, drop a portal and clear out the area around the entrance and focus on killing the boss and clear out as much of the map as you can after killing the boss. I have generally been preferring the second, like the insane sprinting strategy, but I am playing a fast build with stun immunity and a lot of life regen, so I can take a hit, keep running and recover before the next hit lands. This means running through is the right call most of the time for me. You just want to make sure that the map isn't full of volatile barrels. I have tried to do that same run through strategy on volatile barrel maps, and that has not gone as well. I've definitely gotten blown up an embarrassing number of times doing that. A possible suggestion here is that you can fit in a cast on death portal setup into your links somewhere, or you can use this omen, omen of return. 
and that will give you one cast on death portal. You can only use one omen in every area though, so maybe one cast on death portal from an omen isn't as good as getting some of these that give you like more defensive benefit, like omen of adrenaline or omen of death's door, something like that. Something that would give you a better chance of just staying alive instead of, you know, throwing a portal down for you if you die. And then one extra tip here that I have that I think is maybe the most important thing if you're worried about dying, if you're worried about just trying to clear them, use a Scarab of Stability. They're like two chaos in bulk and you don't really need bulk. And they give you an average of nine portals to clear a map, 50% chance for portals to not be consumed. So it's possible that it doesn't trigger for the entire map, but I think realistically it's probably gonna trigger, you know, you're probably gonna have about nine, 10 portals to clear each of these maps with, which is a lot more forgiving for this kind of difficult content than just the standard six. Okay, now I wanna talk about the five bosses and we're just gonna go alphabetically per map, so we'll start with Abomination. The boss is the Depraved Trinity from Act 9. I like this idea a lot. Jonathan Rogers made some jokes a few months ago about making like Uber Dominus. And I actually like the idea of that. It sounds like a nightmare, but this boss isn't really so much of a nightmare. I think it's not so bad. One of the easier of the set of five. You fight all three of Malagaro, Chevron, and Deidre, or Doedra at the same time. And when you kill each of them, they will stick around in ghost form to keep fighting and the others will heal to full. My preferred order for killing them, I guess, is Malagaro and then Doedra. And then I like to save Chevron for last. I found Chevron to be the least dangerous, kind of the easiest to see your mechanics and dodge them. I found dodging Malagaro's attacks and Doedra's red balls to be a lot harder. Really just seeing where all the red balls are is a lot harder. Once you kill all the bosses, they combine into the Depraved Trinity, the final boss of Act 9. And they basically use that same skill set that they did in Act 9. You just want to make sure you don't stand in pools and bait the big nasty area denial balls to the sides of the room and then dodge the, you know, all of the mechanics that are throughout the fight. They'll throw down a line of books. You want to step out of those. They'll throw attacks at you. You want to step out of those kind of circle around the boss constantly. Once you have baited the big area denial ball to the side of the room, then you're kind of free to bait around or run around and dodge mechanics. And then you have to set up to bait again and it's kind of a back and forth. I like this fight. I think it's pretty good. I don't think it's that hard. It was the first boss I killed, and I think it was a pretty good start to tier 17s. Okay, next up is Citadel, and this map is terrible. I hate the pathing throughout the area, the way it twists back in on itself over and over again. It's a maze, and it's a really frustrating, <laughs> deadly maze, and at least it was in my runs through here. I don't actually think it's a bad map. I just had a bad time here. I will admit that it looks very cool. The boss is Uber Uhtred. It's basically just the regular Uhtred fight, except you have to kill Medved and Varana during the two intermissions to make those intermissions end. And he does a lot more damage. I like it more than the regular Uhtred fight, or at least I remember it more than the regular Uhtred fight. I think I've probably done it more times now than all of my combined regular Uhtred fight attempts. I think the artwork here is great, and I would say the main tip for this fight is to stick close to Uhtred and always try to dodge behind him. His main dangerous skills are like a frontal swirly cone thing where he kind of fans from side to side, and then he does like a cyclone line. He will shoot a straight line out, and then he'll just spin in a circle, just like fighting Piety in Act uh, 4. Basically, just by being behind him all the time, you will dodge both of those mechanics by default. Other than that, you just want to dodge the lines that shoot out from the wall, which can be challenging. They will slow your action speed if they hit you, and that is pretty bad, but the fight doesn't actually deal that much damage. I said this in the last video, but I was lagging like crazy, and I was on my last portal, and I still managed to kill this boss while being stunned by petrification statues and lagging out of my mind. I just basically face tanked everything, including terrible American internet. And that was before I had a progenesis rocking. I was just using like a taste of hate and a topaz flask, and I was able to live through all of that. Then I walked out of the boss room, having, you know, been successful, and a goat man jumped on my face and one-shot me. So the trash was definitely a lot nastier in this area than the boss. Fortress is the heist map with the uber heist boss, and just like heist, it's bleh. I like, I love GGG. I like it more than most players. I think they're the best company in the industry at making boss fights. I would put them up against FromSoft. Maybe I'm insane, but I really do think they're operating at that level. But the Unbreakable is not a great fight. And so the Uber version of the Unbreakable is really not that great either. The main mechanics of this fight are boss attacks and frontal cones, but also some back lasers. So once again, 
He'll try to hit you, you dodge behind him, but you also want to make sure that you're not standing in those back lasers. Every now and then he will power up both of his arms and do a double armed cyclone whirly durly thing and now you have to run around in circles while outrunning the cyclone and not getting hit by the lasers. This is a cool concept. I have to admit, I do like this part of this fight, but then that's it. And then you go back to the boring part where you're just dodging his auto attacks like you like you're fighting Hillock on the beach, but also not getting hit by lines. I feel like this fight is missing one more mechanic that would make it painful and good, like an area denial. The boss is just so slow and it's so easy to dodge all of his attacks that I think it kind of undercuts the danger. I did also just start face tanking some of the, the whirly cyclone hits so I could suppress them and regenerate energy shield from it at one point in my last kill. So that kind of indicates the level of damage that he is dealing. That's OK. I think it's good for one of these fights to be kind of a pushover. And this guy is that. So that is my advice. If you're struggling to get one of your tier 17 done to unlock the five slot map device, I would run Fortress. This boss is compared to the others, uh, a pretty big wimp. Getting to the boss is rough. But then once you're there, he is kind of a big chump who just really can't hit you. I still wouldn't do him if he's possessed, though. So just to give this fight a bit of praise, I will say that the mechanics are very well telegraphed. Maybe that is why it doesn't feel so difficult, like unfairly difficult. I can actually tell what's going on throughout the whole fight, unlike some other fights. All right, now let's move on to one of those, really the prime example. Sanctuary has by far the hardest boss to me. It's the Sanctum map and it has the Sanctum boss, Lycia. The map flow is pretty good. In fact, I kind of think it's the best map layout of the bunch. The boss is legitimately very good. I think it's my second favorite, but man, is it hard to see what's happening during her intermissions. She basically just does the normal Lycia fight mechanics, but when you push her to 50% or so, she will start her intermission and launch extremely hard to see swirlies toward the outside of the room in waves, and you have to narrowly path between all of them to not get killed. But also you have to fight Baydad at the same time, and the intermission won't end until Baydat dies. The key to dealing with Baydat is to keep him on screen at all times and to dodge whenever he tries to leap slam onto you or to snipe you from range. He will leap off screen to snipe you, so you have to dodge between Lycia's swirlies and keep him in your sights so that you can time the dodges on his snipes or it will just one bang you. Now, as for Lycia's mechanics, she will throw down tons of spears or staffs. I don't know what they are, it doesn't matter. What they do is they provide a swirling area denial mechanic. They will absolutely annihilate you if you're in them when they do their spin, but they don't permanently do that damage. You can maybe move through them very quickly in between their swirls if you're fast, but if you stay in one and let it swirl on you, you will be dead. She has really good voice line callouts for her uh, for her skills, so you kind of I mean, you definitely want to be playing with sound on in Path of Exile. It really is like denying yourself a, a crucial sense to not have your sound on. When she yells, you will know pain. You want to make sure to run behind her and keep moving behind her the whole time to dodge her pain beam. She will spin and try to target you with it. When she says inevitable and summons a big red rune, you want to step out of it immediately, then jump right back into the middle of it once it has exploded as the area around it will then explode after a one second delay. That's basically it for her mechanics. You just want to keep dodging and do not stay in the Swirling Spears. They are insanely dangerous and they deny a massive amount of area around the room. You can try to bait her into throwing more of them toward the edge, but I have not really had much luck with that. Good luck with Lycia. She has definitely been the hardest boss in my experience. This last map, Ziggurat has a bunch of Abyss monsters in it. I really hate Abyss as a league mechanic, so I'm not a huge fan of the monsters, but I actually think the map layout is pretty good. The artwork is also really nice. I like how gloomy it is. I wish I liked Abyss. Uh, I don't, but I wish I did. The boss is Katarina, and she is one of my absolute favorites in the game. Unfortunately, I think I love her in large part because of the betrayal music that plays while you're fighting her, and that's not playing here. It's just some other calm, spooky music running throughout the map. It's not even the Abyss or Abyssal Lich music, which is also pretty good and would make sense here. So like, it's a good map. I just want to change the music, really. I also like this fight a lot. It's Katarina, so all of the normal stuff you would do during her fight still applies. You want to make sure you dodge her frontal cone and always try to stand behind her. 
dodge the bitey skull that she throws out and step onto her skeleton kids when she spawns them all. Then you want to bait her staffs toward the edge of the room when she slams down a staff that says Kulamak and then leaves an area denial. That is stuff you want to bait toward the corners of the room. And you want to wait until she's about to slam you before you move out of it or she will teleport after you and make a larger slam. And so you really want to just bait it, wait until it's about to hit, then move and not actually get hit by it. When she throws out her big fan of magic green beans, you want to make sure you dodge out of those before they explode. Don't stand in her scythe slash either. Just kind of always try to be behind. That's a pretty common rule for boss fights in Path of Exile is hide behind the boss. Each time you knock out 25% of her health, she'll summon an Abyss boss. The first one is Kurgle from Delve, whose mechanics I did not remember at all. I had to go back and do some of that in like Standard League. And basically what he does is he immediately makes the outsides of the room turn into a no-go zone with like insanely deadly magic green beams. So you got green beans and green beams, and you don't want either of them killing you. And those will persist for the rest of the fight. So just the whole area around the outside of the room is totally turned off by the beams. Olaman is the second Abyss boss, and he throws out lots and lots of green balls. So now you have beans, balls, and beams. And you want to stay away from him and dodge through all of the balls that he's throwing out. Now, maybe your build is like super tanky. It can just face tank all those balls, but mine definitely can't. And I would not try to circle kite around him like you do with basically all of the other bosses. You just want to get at range from him and dodge through the field of balls. He also summons little green cremation volcanoes, and you just want to move away from those. Really, you just kind of want to kill him as quickly as you can. He is quite quite nasty, by far the hardest part of this fight. Amanumu is the final Abyss boss, and his main mechanic is that he summons a bunch of little crystal spikes that explode on a short delay when you walk through them. I just sprint through them and then stay clear for a few seconds. Other than that, he just dies. Then Katarina also dies, and that's basically the fight. I like this fight a lot. I think it legitimately is very good. I think it's probably my favorite of the bunch, even with the Abyss monsters that are along the way in the map. It's very good. Uh, I'm a big fan. All right, now I just kind of want to talk about what I've been doing in Tier 17s lately. That'll kind of wrap us up. I've been farming shrines with maximum map mod effect, as I showed in my Atlas Passive Tree. I'll show it off here in game as well. Is this a good strategy? Probably not. I don't care. I've gotten a lot of valuable corpses from all these corpse nodes I've taken. I've gotten a lot of valuable scarabs, like a lot of them. So it's definitely been profitable. More importantly, it's been a challenge, and that's really what I've been going for here. I've been orbital striked by packs of monsters around shrines a ton of times. I've also gotten lucky and pulled some divine shrines and maps, and that is basically a cheat code to go clear out most of the map for free. All right, just so we're clear. I am not recommending that you do this strategy. I am not saying it is a good or smart thing to do. It is a stupid thing, but it is a challenge I made up for myself to have some fun, and it has been successful on that front, and it's also made a bit of currency, so not a terrible use of time. I'm thinking about getting even weirder with it and farming, like, ritual in tier 17s because, again, I think it would be fun and maybe kind of funny, but maybe it could even be good. Probably not, but I won't know until I test. Okay, hopefully this helps you with clearing out tier 17 maps, or if you're already doing that, it gives you some ideas on how to challenge yourself and maybe do some do some weird stuff, just get kind of wacky with it. These maps can all be pretty difficult initially, even the wimpy heist boss can easily one bang you if you're not ready for it, so do not feel bad if they're a bit of a struggle, that is literally the point. They are supposed to give you a challenge and if, if the going gets tough, you just kind of want to take it on the chin, keep gearing your character up, and get back in there and take these guys out. I've really been having a lot of fun stress testing and uh, stress dying in tier 17s, and I think I'm probably going to put a lot more effort into farming tons of maps just so I can get into more of these things and keep playing around. Alright, that's it. Thanks for watching. Bye.